Prayer, at its core, is far more than a ritual or religious duty, it is the lifeblood of the believer's spiritual journey, the intimate connection between the soul and its Creator. In the sacred stillness of prayer, the infinite meets the finite, and we are invited into a divine conversation that transcends time and space. It is here, in this sacred exchange, that the heart pours out its deepest longings, fears, and desires before the one who knows us fully. Yet, for many, the purity of prayer can be overshadowed by routine, distracted thoughts, and self-serving motives. What should be a moment of profound communion often becomes a mechanical exercise, where words lose their meaning and intention is misdirected. To truly pray is to step into the presence of God with authenticity, to lay bare the heart, and to seek not just answers, but transformation. In a world filled with noise, prayer calls us back to a place of quiet reverence, where the soul can be realigned with the heart of God, C.S. Lewis once remarked, we must lay before him what is in us, not what ought to be in us. This profound statement captures the very essence of authentic prayer. At its core, prayer is an honest exchange between the soul and its creator. It is the act of opening one's heart, pouring out thoughts and emotions unfiltered and unrestrained. Yet, how often do we fall into the trap of masking our true selves? Offering God rehearsed prayers, tailored not for the divine ear but for our own sense of spiritual pride, Jesus, in his teachings, warned of this very danger. In Matthew 6 verse 5, he says, When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Here, Christ is addressing the issue of hypocrisy, the temptation to perform spirituality rather than live it. In today's world, this might not look like standing on street corners, but it can manifest in subtler ways, prayers spoken aloud to impress, crafted in eloquence not for God but for the approval of those around us. But God desires something different. He seeks the honest, unpolished prayers of the heart. He wants the tears, the doubts, the fears, and even the confusion. He is not impressed by our performance, but by our authenticity. C.S. Lewis echoed this when he said, I pray because I can't help myself. I pray because I'm helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me all the time, waking and sleeping. It is in these words that we find the heart of true prayer, dependency. To approach God in prayer is to admit our helplessness, to recognize that we cannot navigate this world on our own. It is not about changing God or manipulating Him to bend to our desires. Prayer, as Lewis pointed out, is about changing us. It transforms the way we see our struggles, our triumphs, and even ourselves. One of the most beautiful aspects of prayer is that it must be renewed every day. There is no such thing as a prayer that lasts. Just as we need food for our bodies, our spirits need daily sustenance through communion with God. Lewis poignantly stated that, relying on God has to begin all over again every day, as if nothing had yet been done. This daily discipline is both humbling and empowering, reminding us that no matter how strong our faith may seem, it must be nurtured, tended to, and refreshed continuously, yet, in this renewal, there is freedom. There is no prescribed length or format for prayer. Jesus never said we must pray for an hour or more each day to be considered faithful. In fact, he specifically warned against making prayer a ritualistic performance. What matters is not the length of our prayers, but the sincerity behind them. As we move through our days, in the car, at work, in the kitchen, or in moments of quiet, we are invited to carry an ongoing conversation with God. Paul, in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, urges believers to pray without ceasing. This command may seem daunting at first glance, but it is not meant to be a burden. Rather, it is an invitation to live in constant awareness of God's presence. It is not about uttering formal prayers every minute of the day, 
but about maintaining an open line of communication with God in all that we do. Whether in moments of joy or frustration, in success or failure, God desires to be part of it all, imagine a day where, instead of reacting with anger when someone cuts you off in traffic, you offer a quick prayer for their safety. Or when you're overwhelmed by the tasks before you, you pause and ask God for strength. These small moments of connection create a rhythm of grace throughout the day, anchoring us in the presence of God, Jesus emphasized this when he said, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Matthew 6 verse 6. Prayer is not for show, it is for the quiet places of our hearts. Where only God is present. Whether in solitude or surrounded by others, our prayers should always be directed to the one who sees beyond the surface, into the depths of our souls. Another common mistake in prayer, according to Jesus, is the use of vain repetitions. In Matthew 6 verse 7, he warns, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. The temptation to think that God can be manipulated by the sheer volume of our prayers or by repeating the same phrases over and over is a misunderstanding of His nature. God is not distant, indifferent, or unaware of our needs. In fact, Jesus reassures us, saying, Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Matthew 6 verse 8. The power of prayer does not lie in the words we use, but in the relationship we cultivate with God. Lewis insightfully pointed out that the value of the words used in a prayer is to make us, not God, attentive to what we are asking. This is not to say that we should not persist in prayer. On the contrary, persistence is often a demonstration of faith. However, persistence should not be confused with vain repetition. It is one thing to continually bring a deep need before God, wrestling with Him in prayer like Jacob did, and another to mindlessly repeat phrases, thinking they hold some magical power. There is a beauty in wrestling with God in prayer, as demonstrated throughout Scripture. Think of Hannah, the mother of Samuel, who wept bitterly before the Lord, pouring out her soul in her anguish, 1 Samuel 1. Her prayer was not polished or rehearsed, it was raw, vulnerable, and real. God responded to her sincerity, blessing her with a son, Samuel, who would grow to become a great prophet in Israel, or consider King Hezekiah, who, when faced with the imminent destruction of Jerusalem by the Assyrian army, laid out his fears before God. He prayed earnestly, O Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Give ear, O Lord, and hear, open your eyes, O Lord, and see, listen to the word Sennacherib has sent to insult the living God. 2 Kings 19 verses 15 to 16. Hezekiah's prayer was one of desperation, but it was also filled with faith, and God answered by delivering Jerusalem from destruction, these examples show us that prayer is not about finding the right formula or using the perfect words. It is about pouring out our hearts before God, with all our doubts, fears, and longings, trusting that He hears and responds in His perfect timing. One of the most challenging aspects of prayer is aligning our will with God's. So often, we come to God with our desires, our plans, and our needs, asking Him to bless them. But true prayer seeks not to impose our will on God, but to surrender our will to Him. Jesus Himself modeled this in the Garden of Gethsemane when He prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Luke 22 verse 42. This is the ultimate posture of prayer, a heart that trusts God's will above all else. It is not easy but it is in this surrender that we find peace, knowing that God's plans for us are far greater than anything we could ask or imagine. At the end of the day, the most powerful prayer is a sincere prayer. It is a prayer that comes from the heart, unfiltered and raw, 
spoken with faith and trust in a God who knows us intimately and loves us deeply. As C.S. Lewis wisely said, the prayer preceding all prayers is, may it be the real I who speaks, in this sacred dialogue with God. We are not merely asking for things, we are entering into a relationship, a relationship that has the power to transform us from the inside out. Prayer is not about changing God, but about changing us. It shapes our hearts, aligns our desires with His, and draws us into a deeper communion with the One who created us. As we move through the rhythms of daily life, it is easy to forget that prayer is not a performance but a deeply personal and sacred encounter with the Divine. In a world that often measures worth by outward appearances and achievements, we can fall into the trap of thinking that our prayers must be eloquent or long to be heard. But prayer, in its most genuine form, is not about the number of words spoken, nor is it about impressing others with our spirituality. It is about approaching God with a heart stripped of pretense, free from the pressure to appear holy or righteous in the eyes of the world. True prayer is an act of vulnerability, a moment where we come before God not with a polished facade, but with raw honesty, bringing our brokenness, our joys, our doubts, and our fears. In this space, God desires our authenticity more than our perfection. He seeks a heart that longs for communion with Him, not one concerned with how others perceive it. When we pray, we are invited into a transformative relationship, where God not only listens but also reshapes our hearts and minds to align with His will. Humility is at the core of this sacred dialogue. It is the acknowledgement that we are not in control, that we need God's grace and guidance in every area of our lives. In the quiet moments of prayer, we are reminded that it is not about bending God to our desires but allowing Him to mold us according to His purposes. Through sincere prayer, we move beyond mere words and into a deeper connection with the One who knows us completely and loves us unconditionally, and as you pray, may you experience the peace that comes from knowing that you are heard, you are loved, and you are held in the hands of a God who cares deeply for you. Let your prayers rise, not as empty words, but as a fragrant offering of your heart, poured out in faith, trust, and love.